Hello YouTube. It's been a long process. I mean a long process. But I finally got my valve train fitted. It has been a um, quite a task. The the guide plates here. I, I kind of wish I went with the uh, divorce style guide plates. But this is what came with the sonar heads. It looks like it's really close in there. Let me get a light. But I had to clearance. I had to do some work to make these things work. See, it's not as close as it looks. On this one here, I had to actually file a little bit on the heads because the push rods were so close. Both of them were so close to the outer edges. The holes are just not quite in the right in the right place and I don't I think it's Edelbrock's doing and they they tell you that the intakes are going to be you know the ones that are the closest to the but it's not always the the game here see even on that one there's quite a bit of I've got plenty of clearance on that I mean it looks good all the way I've had to I had to do some work on the guide plates I've had to um oblong the holes a little bit so I could shift them over a little bit more one way or the other. I mean, some of them, like this one here, I mean, it's beautiful where, it's, where it sits. This one right here is absolutely beautiful, but it's just, an, it's just what you run into when you're dealing with custom stuff and everything um, that you're going to have that kind of thing. They say five thousandths is the minimum amount of clearance that you can have um on there but i've got arp studs i've got competition cams um uh, push rods uh they're 200 thousandths longer than stock so it makes them eight inches long total um there's another youtube video uh straub does it's an excellent tutorial on um how to check for push rod length and you don't you, you don't use your push rods to length to establish proper geometry you you find your proper geometry and then you establish correct push rod length and you have to have a um, I'm trying to find it here my workbench has become such a mess you have to have a an adjustable push rod like this one right here that um, this one here is adjustable from 7.8 to 8.8 .8 inches and 7.8 is a stock and it's got a um, it's threaded here so yeah sorry with the camera work here um, you can unscrew it like that in place but what you do is with the I'm just going to give a brief overview here see the line that I made there through those pivot points I drew a line there with a sharpie, with a, with a sharp tip sharpie, and what you want to want to have is you want to have that. You start off with this backed all the way off, and you get that line pa parallel to the top of the valve. Now I used a piece of key stock, um, and you can use something like piece of key stock or whatever what have you something that's flat and what you're going to do is you're going to establish whether or not that is level you get that level first with that line now, now right now it's not level but that's that's okay because um, what you do is you, you establish the, a level line first and then depending on what your thread pitch is for this one here, I've got the bigger studs on here, the 716 studs, so that's 20 threads per inch. So that means that it turns, um, where's my paper here, my notes. Okay, sorry guys. Okay, so at 20 threads per inch, that's 50 thousandths per turn. So you take half your cam, uh, half your advertised cam lift. In my case, it's 480, which, so that makes it 240 um, divided by 50 thousandths. 
which equals 4.8 turns. Now, the once you have that established, then you take your push rod that's already in place and you unscrew it. I, I like to put the small end down because it's easier to grab hold of down there. And then you screw it to make it fit inside here, you know. And then once you get that, then you take that over to um, a pair of veneer calipers like this. Pardon the workbench, guys. Big pair of veneer calipers, and you measure the overall length of that. It's a pain in the butt. You don't have to do it for every cylinder. Just now, you may need to do it on some custom engines. Check, you may need to check more than one, but um, but this is the idea here: is that you do it like that. Now, I I don't know where that's. I shown less than eight, but um, but that's the idea is to um, but Stra I think it's Straub S T R O U B and the guy over there does an excellent tutorial on it. Um, like I said, I had to I had to uh, I wish I got the divorce plates, but I didn't get those. Um, I just went ahead and made these work, and, and they work fine. Um, they tell you in the instructions that uh, right here it says note if the camera will focus on that or not most common areas of push rod interference and you can see right there that it's always the intakes on this particular head why they don't fix that from the factory to <laughs> make it a little bit bigger to begin with I don't know I wish I knew uh, you know, this isn't like this is the first prototype head that they built, but yet, you know, um, it, it was it was a lot of work. I, I think the ones with the tabs, you know, the divorced uh, push rod plates would have been a little bit easier to get that um, and, you know, a, a, an adjustment. But, uh, you know, here again, I was able to make it work. It just just a lot of a lot of extra things to do there. Um one other issue that I ran, because I've got an A6 uh, axial compressor on this thing, um, the valve cover on this has got a, um, when you put the valve cover on, it actually, now this is a shorty, or like a basically stock, I don't know if you can see there, it's hanging on on the tops of the rock arm nuts. I've already adjusted all my rock arms. One of the things that, too, that, um, side step back on this valve cover again, is that when you're doing this, I like to do it with the intake manifold off, and you got to be real light in your adjustment. Don't feel for a lot of drag when you're turning that push rod, because I can tell you, like these these were once pushed pumped up and now they're not look how they're pushed down they are if you tighten it till it feels really tight and the and the lifter's not put uh pumped up real good it's going to push in like this so you just want to barely tighten to your to your um to you have just a little bit of drag and that's it stop right there and then then go your amount of turns past that and i went a half turn on mine um, past you know that point after I got all of them adjusted, I took them all a half turn more in, and then um, and then set my um, uh, the lock nuts on all of them, so they're all good now. So it's I mean it's got a extremely strong valve train, but it also has what's more important is the proper geometry of valve train. If you have a um, the uh, it's it's contacting the valve at the right point on the outer one third of the valve is where it contacts and the, the easy way to do that is to take some dicum um, machinist bluing compound like this here and put a dab on the top of the valve stem 
you know, clean it off with some brake clean, put a dab of that on there, let it dry. In cold weather like we're having right now, it may be, take a long time to dry. But put it on there and then put the rocker arm on there with the push rod, you know, with the lifter all the way down and all that stuff. Put it on there and then wiggle it back and forth like this, just a little bit, and then pull it back off. You don't have to put the nut on or anything, but that'll tell you, tell you whether or not where you're at on the on the uh, top of the valve stem. But the, I started to say a minute ago, um, from the from the parallel line, parallel to the top of the valve valve spring here, I started here and I went 4.8 turns in with this. And that's half half of it. And the idea is, is that is that it'll always be at the halfway in the pivot point. So you'll get the best possible geometry out of it. But but Straub has a really good video on that. And, and I invite you to go over there and look at that and um, watch it several times because it's it's kind of a... It, if you haven't ever done anything like that, it can be a little bit intimidating. Um, but he, he does a really, really good video on that. So... Um, like I said, I had to I had to do lots of lots of clearance work, but the good part now is is that um, um, oh, and the valve cover, um, I could grind off these, but I'm not going to do that. I needed to go with the short valve covers because the tall valve covers keeps the A6 compressor from coming all the way in. So my workaround on that is. I've got um, double thick <coughs> valve cover gaskets. They make them here. It's got a steel core in there. So this right here, with this gasket on there, I put um, a piece of clay. Where does it go? There it is. I put this piece of clay and a piece of uh, plastic right here and um, put it on the top of the end here and then put that down on there and I came back and measured the thickness of the clay and I've got a quarter inch of clearance um, between the, the top of the stud here and my valve cover or t t I think two, 230 to 240 roughly uh, 0.230 to 0.240 roughly but basically quarter inch so I got plenty of plenty of clearance there now and um, and I think that I don't think that, that one extra valve cover gasket is going to cause me to um, cause the compressor to not be able to come in hopefully I got to I have to double check that but um, but I think that will work out um, I mean if I had to I could probably go down to one valve cover gasket um, one of the things I checked was the thickness of this gasket versus the thickness of that. This gasket's like 270, I think. So it's it's hanging about 30 to 40 thousandths on the end. This valve cover is curved on the inside. It's kind of hard to see it, but it's curved. So it's higher in the middle. It's, it's, it's going to be the ones on the ends that are uh, always going to be the ones in the way. But... Um, it'll clear the rest of them just fine. But I had to get, in order for this application, most of the valve cover gaskets have the hole on this end and then the riding right here. And I couldn't use that um, because I needed, on this application, I needed to be able to have the hole back here without having the riding upside down here. So, what I did was I went with these valve covers here and uh, I think they'll look really good um, but I needed the hole back here to put the PCB valve back here and I wanted on this side I wanted the hole forward for the oil fill so that it's easy to get to the oil fill but most of the valve covers that are out there have the hole had the holes on the wrong end and man I tell you what that was a pain in the butt trying to find this uh, I mean, all the newer stuff, all the other newer stuff, you want the holes on this end, but this older stuff here, you need the holes on the on the back end. If you put the PCV valve right here, 
<coughs> the compressor will hit it when you when you bring it in. The last thing you want to do is break a PCV valve. So that's why I wanted it on that end. Um, besides, besides, it would have put the oil fill on the back end over there, which I didn't want that at all. So um, anyway, um, got the intake manifold to the intake manifold in the dishwasher and cleaned it up, although it's brand new. Um, but now I need to check, make sure how my compressor is going to fit. So that's the next next big thing to do here. Have a good day, y'all.